This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. So does that mean that you get to get away with buying a cheaper card? Yes, uh, a $200 AMD card will outperform a $500 NVIDIA card, for sure. That's amazing, and so for your money, you might as well just get two or three of them. Absolutely. With Hashcat, your performance scales linearly, so if you have three cards, it's going to be exactly three times as fast as if you have one card. So if you have eight cards like I have in my rig I just showed you there, it is literally eight times faster than if I had just one card. The performance scales absolutely linearly for the number of GPUs that you have in the system. And then with VCL clustering, what we can do is we can say we have eight GPUs in this box and we have eight GPUs in this box. VCL provides an abstraction layer that just tells Hashcat, hey, we have 16 GPUs. Use them however you want. And you asked earlier how those were networked. Right now, they're just networked via uh, private uh, giggy, um, you know, local LAN. Um, they're not on the internet. Well, they're on the internet, um, but not the clustering parts on the separate LAN. Um, but we're actually probably going to move to an InfiniBand for the interconnect on those so that we can get native PCI bus speeds to each GPU. Nice. Yeah, so to get PCI 2.0 speeds to each GPU, we need Isn't about... Is that just like USB 3 to USB 3? Like, how does that work? So with InfiniBand, InfiniBand's a proprietary uh, cluster interconnect. Um, it's used for things like, it's not just used for clustering, it's also used for things like direct attached storage. It just provides uh, the physical medium, you know, for high speed interconnects. InfiniBand goes up to something crazy like 300, me uh, 300 gig a second, depending on the spec. Um, and since you're not going very far, it shouldn't be too difficult to implement. Exactly, yeah. Uh, everything's all within the same cabinet, and we're probably going to have to require a second cabinet pretty soon, so everything will be going just between two cabinets. So yeah, very short cable runs there. So can uh, you give me an idea of the kind of performance of this monstrosity you've built? Sure. So right now, because we're only using gigabit Ethernet, um, we're kind of network bound at the moment. When we move to InfiniBand, the goal is to dedicate 500 megabits of bandwidth per GPU. So if we have, you know, an, for the eight uh, GPU rig, that means we're going to have four gigabits of, Ethernet, or, uh, of InfiniBand going to that node. And that'll allow for native 2.0, uh, PCI 2.0 bus speeds. Um, and that will allow, allow the performance to scale linearly just as it does in a local system. So if we have 16 GPUs, it will be literally exactly 16 times faster than one single GPU. Awesome. And so can you give me kind of like a, an idea of performance as far as like benchmarking is concerned throughout like any like hashes versus the key space and what kind of time it would take? Sure. Um, so for NTLM using Hashcat Lite with 16 7970s, we can brute force that at a rate of 280 billion hashes per second. AKA, it doesn't matter what your password is, it might take at the most three seconds? Sure. Um, the thing with brute force is that um, you kind of reach an upper limit to where no matter how much power you throw at it, it's still going to be hard to reach things like link 9, link 10. But with um, Markov chains, what Adam has named brute force plus plus in the new versions of Hashcat, we can reduce that key space using a threshold parameter to perform a probabilistic brute force to where if it's a user selected password because users kind of think alike across the board we can instead of exhausting the entire key space like let's say instead of doing like uh, length eight instead of doing 95 to the eighth power we can reduce that key space to say like let's do 30 to the eighth and try only like the top 30 most probable characters for that key space and we can get results insanely quick. We don't have to exhaust the entire 95th to the 8th. We can sit there and say, we want this brute force to run for exactly two hours. Let's do 35 to the 8th and just get the top 35 characters for each position. And we can just obliterate a hash list within a matter of minutes with that. Yeah, Yeah, I was just going to, uh, my last question was basically like, where can they find uh, more of the stuff that you're doing with uh, GCIH? And, Structure uh, Consulting. So we don't have a website yet, um, but I do occasionally post on Per Thorsheim's blog, which is securitynirvana.blogspot.com. Per Thorsheim is the organizer of the Password Security Conference in Oslo, Norway, and he was also uh, nominated for IT Security Professional of the Year and was actually uh, one of the four finalists for IT Security Professional of the Year in Norway. Um, I think that's the right title for that. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a guest blogger on his blog, if you will. So securitynirvana.blogspot.com. Awesome. And bindshell.nl, that's your site? Yeah, bindshell.nl is, uh, that's more of like my, uh, password cracking community site, if you will. Um, yeah. Otherwise, if people are interested in finding the stuff that you do day to day, should they just go ahead and, and uh, subscribe to you on Twitter, uh, JM Gosney? Yeah, JM Gosney on Twitter. That'd probably be the best place to you know, find uh, up to date information to run on Twitter. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy. Absolutely, Darren. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Take care. This time of the year, between holidays, bad weather, sick days, everyone is trying to spend some time away from the office, but taking personal time is really challenging when you're in IT. I mean, users always need to be supported, networks and systems always need to be managed, and that's why I'm recommending GoToAssist from Citrix. It has three essential support tools in one easy-to-use integrated cloud-based platform. There's GoToAssist Remote Support, which lets you provide live or unattended support to any PC or Mac or mobile device from anywhere, even from your iPad or even in an Android device with their free app. So you can take time away from the office too. Plus, with GoToAssist monitoring, you can proactively identify issues before they become a massive headache. No, I used to get those. And you can easily keep track of all of these things with GoToAssist Service Desk. Uh, when I was working IT in DC, GoToAssist products were a godsend. And let me tell you, they saved my bacon a few times. So check this out. You can sign up for a special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5. That's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5. So we have the Roku, the Google TV, there's the Xbox 360, the Netgear Neo TV, there's a Sony one, I think there's a Samsung one. But you know what I say? Don't buy any of them. Yeah, what's that? Just make your own! <laughs> yes! Well, of course. Why not? I know, right? So my problem was I really wanted to have a browser on my television. And for the longest time, I've just been using my laptop. But my laptop is kind of slow for video output. So I was like, oh, maybe I should just build my own home theater PC. It's, it's so interesting that, that you say, I, what I love is that you say, what you really want is just a browser on your TV. That's all I want. And it, you, surprisingly, it is so hard to find that. Because anything that you buy, you have to get these little applications to run everything. And you have to go into different <laughs> applications to do every single little thing. Whether it's Netflix or it's Hulu Plus or it's Amazon Prime, everything is different. Well, you know, that again is just a uh, really a, a conversation of the difference between like an app ecosystem versus using quote unquote the cloud, the web. Yes. And I prefer things to just use the web browser because I don't want an app if you've already got it working in, in a uh, web browser. Now, yep. that said, you've got a web browser on, uh, you know, Android, you've got a web mm -hmm. browser on Google TV, and both of those you can get inexpensive boxes to plug into your TV. Of course, they have their own app ecosystem for those. I guess in Chrome, they do. the app is really just a web page. but uh, you run into problems even then. Yep. Like I remember just trying to use like Hulu or Netflix through the browser on any of those, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, hey dog, we see that you're using some other kind of computer." And so and then you have these crappy like interface problems with your the stupid remotes that come with them and the crappy little keyboards on the remotes. I think the biggest problem for me is just the the you know the way that the industry treats different devices as if they are not all just a general purpose computer. It's like They're how is all a, computers. Yeah, how is your phone any different? How is the browser on your yeah. phone any different than the browser on your desktop? Just that was another problem I had because I don't pay for Hulu Plus, mm -hmm. but I do watch a lot of shows on Hulu. Reason being was because a lot of the shows that I want to watch on TV aren't available as mobile applications. Yeah, you know what happens when you go Even to Hulu on a, on a Chromebox, or not a Chromebox, on what a uh, Google TV? It just says, yo dog, um, not going to happen. It on says, a Google TV? Yeah, yeah on a Google wow. TV. You go over to Hulu and it says, oh, we don't, we can't play this for you because you're not a computer. Yeah. Or so I'm going to be actually, like, you know what? Get this, Hulu. I'm a computer. computer. <laughs> actually, my favorite is trying to, I recently tried to uh, rent a movie off of uh, YouTube and play it oh. on a Chrome box. And then YouTube's error message said, yo, dog, we can't support your browser on the YouTube movie program, maybe you want to update to Chrome. And I'm all like, yo, really? <laughs> YouTube, 
I'm as chromey as they get. I'm a <laughs> chrome box running chrome. Anyway, I think that might have been fixed since, but it's a headache. Yes, it so is. So you're just going to build a generic PC. Yeah, so um, you know, I had plenty of reasons for building it, and I really wanted to save some money. So I decided to build this one and keep it around the $300 range. So nice. pretty decently cheap, not as cheap as an Apple TV or any of those other little streaming boxes that you can get nowadays. Yeah, there's even a $200 Chrome a laptop. Yes, there is the but Chrome again, laptop. But Chrome, like I said. Yeah, exactly. So I just want something that I can, you know, leave booted on and run me through my this. TV. So what do we get for three hundred bucks? All right. So first off, you have the Mini ITX Media Center HT PC case. It's called like the Japanese black case or something like that, and it's only about forty nine, uh, forty nine ninety nine, fifty bucks on uh, Newegg right now. I bought all of these products about like six months ago. Huh. <laughs> I just haven't gotten around to actually building this thing. Sure. So they have dropped in price a little bit. Um, these two little guys, eight gigs of RAM. Ta-da! Yeah. How much was that? It was about, I want to say $32.99. I'm, I'm just like amazed because I once I spent $100 on 64 megs of PC-133. <laughs> so. Me too. And this is probably um, overkill for this motherboard, but eh. What's in the mobile? So the motherboard is the Asus Minimax E45M1L Deluxe Mobile in Aww. CPU combo, so it has a CPU on it. It's a Minimax. Yeah, so this is the most expensive part, obviously. It's 190 for that. But everything's integrated. I yeah, mean, everything's already integrated. Does this in have Wi-Fi? Um, I think it does. Oh, yeah, there you I'll go. Have to you check. got antenna ports right there, so yeah, it's got... Okay. Wi -Fi, so it's got Wi-Fi, HDMI. Yeah, it has HDMI, has a crap load of USB ports, which was super cool for me. I love that the Bluetooth module right here, I don't know if you can see this, Paul, but this is literally like a nubbin that is uh, <laughs> like stuck in the USB port. It's like, here, you can kind of see it there. Anyway, it's, it's kind of cute because it's literally a Bluetooth module that they glued in. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. And then we also have the Kingston 32 gig solid state drive, which I thought was very interesting. So you went with a solid state and a spinny disk. Yeah, you don't have to. This was kind of optional for me. I also got this um, Barracuda 2 terabyte uh, Seagate hard drive. It's just an internal hard drive. And I was like, ah, that might be kind of handy if I want to store some data on it, you know. Pirated movies. Or, you know. Podcasts. Photos. Sorry, I meant podcasts. Photos that yes. I take myself. Winners so don't do wear. I got this about $100, and then this one was uh, $63. Can you believe how expensive solid state drives are? Crazy. Eh, I've come down a lot. Man, so surprising. So, I want to put this thing together so I can start using it. <laughs> All right, well. I mean, As he just tosses things out.